Cool. Uh, sorry, still getting used to um, the Hangouts. Um, all right, cool. It's live. Everyone can still hear me? Great. Um, cool. So um, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Ben. I'm currently uh, finishing up my undergraduate at school um, in Rochester, New York. Um, my background is in uh, computational linguistics and artificial intelligence. Um, so what we're going to be working on today, and I'll say this again when hopefully a few more people trickle in, is uh, we're going to kind of be taking a very high look at um, sort of the intersection of those fields and using it to build um, a spam detection system for email. So, um, you know, something I'm sure you all use Gmail or some other email um, that has a spam folder. We're going to look at the mechanism that um, decides if an email is spam or if it's um, real. So I will give it's still a little bit early. Um, I will give people two or three more minutes to trickle in. Um, and then I will get started. All right, um, it is 1 o'clock, um, so I guess I will start, um, and if anyone else joins, they can, I guess, um, come catch up. Um, so welcome, again, to all of you guys. Um, first thing is I'm posting a link um, here. Um, everything I'm doing I put on GitHub. I have kind of the start, um, the start of what we're working on um, in there, and uh, I will update it at the end with everything we worked on. So if you guys want to... Um, look over anything we worked on, look over the data as we're speaking, um, everything is in there. Um, so I will now begin to share my screen, um, which I can hopefully get working. Um, cool, I will share my entire screen. Cool, um, can you guys hopefully see uh, my screen? I'll have to switch back over here to see that. Um, Cool. Um, all right, cool. So what we're working on, is, as I already mentioned, is um, a system that classifies email spam. Um, so the first thing we're going to need for this, um, and I'll kind of give a generic instruction for that, is a data set. Um, so in machine learning, um, one of the big problems on sort of very high level that we're trying to solve, uh, we can try and solve, is called classification. Um, and simply put, this is, um, as it sounds like, deciding what class to put something in. Um, so, you know, this can be something like spam or not spam. It can be classifying a picture as a dog or a cat. Um, you know, really anything that divides um, splitting up data into two or more classes. Um, so what machine learning really is, in a nutshell, is um, learning from data. So um, kind of way back when, before um, you know, access to data was plentiful and access to computing power was plentiful, people would kind of try and hand write rules to solve a lot of problems. Um, they'd say, you know, if you see this word, it's probably spam. Um, and if you know, there's a link in it, it's probably spam. Um, and that worked all right, but um, you know, especially as problems get more and more complicated, uh, these combinations of rules start to kind of grow out of hand, both in terms of writing them and in terms of, you know, thinking them up and as well as processing them. Um, so a number of techniques um, that kind of all fall under the umbrella of machine learning were developed. Um, basically, these two are to try and kind of automatically learn um, these relations from certain features in our data. And I'll go on in a little bit to explain what a feature is. Um, so what we're really developing here is a system to um, automatically differentiate um, between our two classes, or two or more classes, in this case spam and not spam. Um, and they basically do this without having to kind of manually tell the computer rules. So one of the things that's necessary for this and any machine learning problem is a data set. Um, so the kind of general process is to learn rules from our data set, which we hope represents kind of what all data looks like, 
and then use those rules on that we um, you know use the things we learned on new data. Um, but you know without a data set as a backing to tell us you know what's correct and what's um, you know not and what our data looks like, it's you know we can't develop these rules to you know we can't learn off of anything. We need material to learn. Um, so the data set I have here is uh, it's roughly 1,100 emails. Um, you can see we have a number of um, emails here. Uh, let's open a couple of them. Um, these are the spam emails. Um, so you can see this one is pretty typical email spam. It's trying to sell something. Um, you know, this one talking about pay-per-view order information. You know, the low, low price of 1995. Um, this one looks like it's HTML. Um, again, debt saver. Um, you know, fairly typical spam emails. And then we also have this folder of non-spam emails. Um, you know, this looks like some kind of message board question. Um, this one, you know, uh, it looks like some it's a Yahoo Groups post. Um, a lot of these are actually happen to come from Yahoo Groups. Um, you know, here's some seems like some business communication. Um, you know, they're talking back and forth. Um, but representative emails of sort of what not spam looks like. Um, this is really important because if our data doesn't represent kind of what we'll see, um, you know, the things we learn don't really make any sense. Um, so basically, um, to kind of sum up the gist of our problem is we're trying to um, determine features, and again, I'll explain what those are in a second, to be able to differentiate this data set of not spam from this data set of what is spam, um, and hopefully that helps, you know, when we look at kind of future spam. Um, so that was a lot. Um, any questions so far before I move forward? Um, give me a second to type if there are any questions. Um, cool. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone has any questions. Um, I believe I get a sound if you ask a question, um, but I will try and switch back and forth screens um, just in case I don't hear that. Cool. Um, so I've mentioned these things called features a few times. Um, so I guess it's important to say, what is a feature? Well, if you noticed, uh, I'm sure you did, these emails, uh, both the spam and the not spam ones, are text. Um, text and language are something that we as humans understand really well, but um, computers understand kind of less well. We have to we, you know, we have to transform this English language or this natural language into um, things that computers can understand, which in the general case are usually um, numbers. Um, this is sort of where the natural language processing part of this comes in. Um, you know, transforming, you know, how do we get the computers to sort of understand the gist of the context of these messages? And the machine learning part of this is how do we understand you know, patterns in those numbers, and how can we use that to apply to um, to apply to future things? Um, so, what a feature is is basically some transformation of our input into, um, in our case, a numeric uh, feature or just a number. So, we want to transfer. You know, we want to get a set of numbers or a feature vector, as we call it, that represents this email. And the better we can represent this email in numerical form, the you know more patterns that will hopefully arrive arise if we pick good features. Um, so an example is, and we're going to kind of use this before we write any other features, is we're just going to straight up look at the number of words um, in each email. Um, so there's a script that I have here, um, feature extract.py. You really do not have to worry about what it is. Um, you're welcome to take a look into it. It's in the GitHub link that was posted. Basically, what this does is, for every email in our data set, it applies all it, it applies all of these features and puts this into what's called an R file. Um, I'll go into more details in an R file in a second. Um, an R file is basically just the file that Weka. Um, the program that I'll show in a second that we're going to be using for our machine learning. That's what that. Re that's you know how that reads in its data. Um, so if I open up a sample R file, you'll see it's pretty simple. Um, the relation is just you know the name of our problem, um, and then each of these attributes is a feature. Um, so the first feature I have just as a sample is the number of words, uh, and this says it's a real number. And then our last attribute is always um, the different classes. So in this case, spam can either be true or false. Uh, and from here, we just have our data. So for every email in our data set, we have the value of each attribute. So for example, the first one, there's 1,003 words, and it is spam. Uh, you know, We'll scroll down now to the not spams and say this not spam has 30 words. 
Um, this is not something we'll ever have to look at. This gets just thrown into Weka. Um, so I say that now I'll hop over into Weka and load up this file. Um, so Weka is a data processing and machine learning tool. Um, it's super, super powerful. We'll explore just a small bit of it today. Um, so this column here in our pre-processing is all of our features. Um, so if we click spam, which is our, you know, is it spam or not, we can see the distribution of spam and not. So we can see of our emails, um, which there are 1,388, 501 of them are spam, and 887 of them are not spam. And in the case that these are um, numerical features, we'll get some additional information here. Um, so if we jump back to our code, we see, um, again, we have one feature right now, um, which is just a number of words in the email. So let's go take a look at that feature in Weka. Um, so we have a distribution here, which doesn't tell us a whole lot um, right now. Uh, we'll get back to that later. Um, but we have some statistics. The fewest number of words is one. The maximum number of words is 13,000, which is very, very, very high. Um, and then we have you know, mean and standard deviation. Um, as we get more features, um, we can start to look at the different distributions that they uh, take um, and kind of which distributions are um, good and which ones are not good. Um, I'll hop back here. Um, this is logical time for any questions. Um, if there are any questions uh, before we start kind of looking at how to choose features and how to make features and how to actually use them. Uh, I'll give you guys a second to type if you have any questions. Otherwise, I will keep going. Uh, cool. All right. Um, I'll keep going. So um, next thing we have in Weka is this classify tab. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of information here. Um, a lot of it can kind of be ignored temporarily. Um, the big things are this box right here lets us choose what's called our classifier. Um, these classifiers you can see are grouped into a number of different categories. Uh, what a classifier is is basically um, how we learn, um, how we try and learn patterns. We'll talk about a couple um, simple classifiers today. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of them out there. You can see these expand out um, you know, into lots of different things. There's tons of different options, and you know, depending on your problem, um, certain classifiers are better suited to um, certain problems. Um, the next thing is our test options. So um, one of the things we want to do is not only about you know, not only train these models to say you know, hey, we've learned these patterns, but we want we need some way to see if a pattern we learned or observed is good. Um, you know, we could learn a pattern, but, you know, if the pattern proves totally useless, that's not very helpful to us. So what this says, and what we're going to use is called percentage split. What an 80% percentage split means is we're going to train a model on 80% of our data. Um, so of the 1,300 emails, um, let's say about 1,000 of them. And then on the remaining 20%, we're going to test out that model and see what percentage of them we get right. Um, so I will ask you guys a question now. Um, can you think of a reason that we don't train on the entirety of our model, we only, on the entirety of our data, we only train on part of it, and we test on kind of a separate chunk of it that we've kind of never seen before, so to speak? Any ideas um, as to why we might do that? You're welcome to type it, or I think you guys have the capability to unmute and um, actually speak. So any so to rephrase the question is um, when we go to train on our data we don't look at all of it we only look at you know some large but you know not the entire percentage of it and then we test it out on another percent any ideas why um, so the answer to this question is that we want to make sure that we don't run into a problem which is called overfitting and overfitting is in a nutshell when we learn trends in our training data that might not exist in the real world. It's when we learn very, very, very specifics that, you know, kind of just occur by chance in our training data, um, but, you know, don't really tell us anything about the pattern. And we'll see a really good example of overfitting 
um, in a few minutes when we have two or three more features. Uh, but it's just important to keep in mind that we always want to test on data that we haven't seen before so that we can kind of simulate having real world data to test our pattern on versus testing on the same data that we trained with. Cool. Um, so now we're going to hop back in and write a little bit of code to get some more features. Um, so to do this, we can just say def, um, you know, we're just writing in Python here, uh, whatever our feature function is, um, and we, um, it gets the entire text of the email, and then we want to return a number. And this will automatically get incorporated into our R file. Uh, that's what the feature extract.py script takes care of. Um, so the number of words was a really simple feature um, that was just kind of, you know, to show how the script works. Um, what I want to, the next feature I want to do um, is to look at if our email is in HTML or if it's just plain text. Um, so how I came up with that, that's just kind of one that I know that, you know, happens to, um, you know, give us an interesting distribution. The way you generally come up with these is to look, you know, by hand at your data set and look for patterns. Um, so, you know, as we scroll through a number of these, not spam, I can see that, you know, of the ones I looked through so far, none of them appear to be, you know, formatted with HTML. Um, and as I scroll through the spam ones, um, at least, you know, one of them that we saw so far, there's a second one, is HTML. So that might be a good one. Um, additionally, you know, just because we're doing this um, kind of only in an hour, we're going to do, um, you know, a kind of approximation. This is not, you know, a perfect way to check if there's HTML. Um, but, you know, we're going to use this approximation. So we're just going to say, has HTML email text, um, that's a parameter, and we'll just return one if the string HTML um, in email text dot upper, or dot uh, lower. Um, so basically, if the letters HTML show up, we're going to assume that that means the email's in HTML, which again might not be the case, but it's kind of a very simplistic way of doing this, else zero. Um, so now we're going to run our feature extract script um, and reopen up our R file, see what we get. So when we reopen up this R file, um, we see we have this second feature now. Um, this has an HTML feature. Um, there's a ding, is that a, um, was that a question? Uh, someone had I heard uh, the chat made some kind of noise, but I don't see a question. Uh, does anybody have a question? Um, all right, I'll continue. Um, sorry if there was one that I missed. Um, so we have this other HTML feature. We can see you know, that our values are 0 and 1. Um, it means standard deviation don't mean too much here. Um, this is interesting, though, uh, the distribution that we got. And we can actually kind of learn a lot from it. Um, so our red represents, um, let's see which class is red. Our red represents things that are not spam. So we can see of the things that are not HTML, the majority of them are red. The majority of them are not spam. Yet when we look at the things that um, do have HTML, it looks like the majority of them are in our blue class or, or spam. And this is just what we expected. And what this shows us, at least from visual inspection, is that we can learn something from this feature, that it's a good feature. Um, you know, we can, as humans, kind of make this um, distinction between, hey, you know, if there is HTML in it, there's a better chance that it is spam. Um, so now we're going to actually look at classifying. Um, so the first classification that we're going to do is a um, rule called 1, a classifier called 1R. Um, so we're going to look, um, and there's a number of things to, um, to look at here. Excuse me. Uh, the biggest one we're going to pay attention to is these numbers right here. Uh, these numbers are simply our accuracy. Um, so you can see, using the features that we have, we have six, we classified 66.9% of our spam, or our emails correctly as either spam or not spam. Uh, on first inspection, this looks really, really, really great. Um, you know, we've been working at this for, what, 20 minutes now, and we're already at 67%. Um, you might think that we're making really, really, really great progress. Um, does anybody have any idea why, uh, I'm not so optimistic, why I say 67% um, is not so great progress, um, why I'm not happy with that number quite yet? Um, any ideas why that kind of might not be as good of a number as it looks? 
Anybody feel free to I uh, feel free to participate. Um, I'm ha more happy to see wrong answers than no answers. Um, so anybody have any ideas um, why our 67% accuracy is not that great? Um, all right, no answers. That's fine. Um, so the answer to this question goes back to our initial data distribution. Uh, we have 1,388 things, and of them, 887 are not spam. So if we take 887 divided by 1,388, saying every email, you know, all of our emails are not spam, we could get this 64% classification. Um, so we really, you know, while 67 looks impressive, we didn't improve by that much over just saying, you know, hey, every email is not spam. Um, the, there are improvements, obviously, um, but what this, the concept this illustrates is what we call a baseline. Um, so a baseline is the kind of super simple classification that we use to compare all of our other results to. Um, so, you know, if our distribution was 50-50, and, you know, of spam and not spam, and we got this, um, you know, 66.9%, that would be really great. And, you know, we improved by um, 17%. But here we only really improved by um, 4%. The other big uh, interesting thing to look at is down here. Um, this is called our confusion matrix. Um, what our confusion matrix is, um, along the rows, it shows what our classifier or our machine learning model classified it at. And under the columns, it shows what it should have been. So this diagonal right here are the things we classified correctly. So of the things that are A, we classified 40, um, 43 of them correctly as A. And we 52 of them we classified as B, in this case spam and not spam. So this diagonal is what we got right, and then we have our confusion along the other diagonal. So this shows what we got wrong. Um, this is really helpful for saying, you know, hey, my if um, you know, we had a zero in one of these columns, we'd say, hey, you know, my classifier is getting everything that is spam right, but, you know, sometimes we're classifying um, not spam, you know, a little too aggressively. We should kind of lighten up our rules a little bit. And we can see how we can tweak parameters for that. Um, but these numbers look sort of equal, which means we just kind of need to um, distinguish a little bit better. Um, so let's go ahead and write a second or a third feature um, and see uh, see how that influences um, what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to write a third feature, and then I want you guys to brainstorm some features you might be able to think of. Uh, and again, you have this data in the GitHub that you can take a look at it. Um, I want you to brainstorm some features um, that we could use um, in addition to the three. So. Um, what I want to do is I want to see, um, my assumption is, again, I've looked through this data, so I'm cheating a little bit, but you kind of come to these conclusions, too, from looking, is that um, spam emails have more links in them. You know, people are trying to sell stuff, you know, click here to buy this, click here to, um, you know, view this, click here to, you know, pay money. Um, so I want to return the number of links. Um, so I'll say def num links, um, and again, we want to, well, I'm not going to look exactly for links, that's a bit more time consuming, um, we're just going to do an approximation of how to find links, so I'm going to return um, email text dot count of, um, let's say, HTTP. Um, this will just return the number of occurrences of the string HTTP, and I'm going to roughly assume that every time somebody mentions that, it corresponds to a link. So I'm going to run our feature extract strip again uh, with our new feature, uh, reload it into Weka. Um, cool, we have this feature here. Uh, and just like our, um, oh, so here it is. Um, cool. So we see um, our minimum, as we expect, is zero. There are emails that have no links. Um, there is one email, it looks like way, way, way over here, that actually has 68 links in it. Um, and then we have our mean and standard deviation. And I will try and zoom in because this is a bit hard to see. Um, we can actually look at our distribution here and see what this tells us. Um, so one of the interesting things is once we get past this point here, um, looks to be about 10, all of the emails that have more than 10 links, 100% of those are spam. So that's a really good feature. Um, we have this rule that um, 
basically we have we have this rule that um, if we look at um, the um, if we look at the number of spam that's greater than ten, we can say, hey, look, you know, definitely spam. And there looks to be some distributions here too. Um, you know, they, these are bluer than red, and then we go over here, they're kind of very red. So we sort of have this general trend where the more links we have, the um, higher likelihood it is that we're going to be spam. So let's look at what this does to our classification. Let's rerun it, and hey, wait a second, our classification didn't change at all, even though we have this new rule that's supposedly much better. Uh, and the reason for this is actually the classifier that we use. So what this 1R classifier does is it says, hey, we're only going to look at one feature and develop rules based on that. So this is only looking at the feature number of words, and you know we're making a whole lot of rules based on that. But we have three features. Um, you know, we're not so sure a number of words is good, but we know that these two features are good. So we want to incorporate all of them. So we're going to switch classifiers. Um, we're going to switch to what's called now a decision tree. Um, a decision tree is a super, super, super easy concept. Um, it's something very similar to what you do as a human. Basically, you start and you make single decisions and you follow them down a path. Um, so I'm going to pull up an example here. Um, it's easier than me kind of using that one. There's sort of much simpler ones. So the classic example, which I assume is the one I'll find, is about um, playing tennis. Yep, here it is. So we're trying to decide yes or no if we want to play tennis. Um, so we look at the skies. Say, is it sunny? Is it overcast? And is it raining? If it's overcast, we play. If it's raining, then we'll look at the wind. And then if the wind is strong, we won't play. If the wind is weak, we will. If it's sunny, we'll look at humidity. If humidity is normal, we'll play. If humidity is high, we won't. So basically, we just make single decisions based on one variable and work down our tree um, to get come to the sort of correct conclusion, or what we hope is the correct conclusion. Um, there's a lot of algorithms for how we build these. We're not going to get into them now. Um, we see we have our tree. Um, so we can see um, what exactly how decisions are made based on this tree. So we can see here what this says is if the number of links is greater than three, we say it's true. If the number of links is less than tree, three, then we look at this subtree. Then we look at if it has HTML. If it has HTML, we look at this tree. If it doesn't have, or if it doesn't have HTML, we look at this tree. If it has HTML, we look here. And we keep going down and down leaves until we have a decision. Um, we look here, and hey, look at that. Our classification improved quite, quite a bit. We're now at um, you know 76 and a half percent. Um, we now, you know, as you can see, we incorporate both has link, has HTML, and number of words. So now we have a classifier that's finally looking at all three of our features. Um, I'm going to take one second to uh, unshare my screen and answer any questions. Um, all right, stop. Um, cool. Um, any questions for you guys? Uh, any questions for me um, so far? Um, I'll give you a second to type them out. Um, I'm also going to answer, I apologize, a few questions. There are some people asking for the link to the Hangout. I'm just going to give them that while you type. Cool. Um, any questions so far about anything I've talked about? I've covered a lot, a lot, a lot of material uh, in this half hour. Uh, and before we go a little further, um, I want to see if you have any questions on any of the classifiers, what we're trying to do, why I picked our features, how we're... Okay, cool. Um, how do you decide which rule is more important than the other? Um, very, very, very good question. Um, I'm going to give you the 30-second answer because the real answer to that is very, very complicated. Um, basically, there is a notion of this thing called information. Um, what you, something you've heard before. Um, information is just what we know. It's knowledge. Um, so what we can say is, how much information do I gain by looking at this feature? Um, so the example is if we have two features, let's say, um, you know, is it sunny and is it windy? Um, in the event that it's sunny out, let's say um, if we look at the sunniness, um, four days, if we have four days where it's sunny and four days where it's cloudy, um, and we, sorry, if we play on um, four days where it's sunny and four days where it's cloudy, and let's say we don't play on two days where it's sunny and two days where it's cloudy, well, 
that doesn't really help us. We don't gain anything by looking at if it's sunny or not because it's, it's sort of even both ways. But if we look at wind and we say every time it's windy, we don't play, and if it's not windy, we always play, we sort of gain a lot of information there. So looking at how windy it is is much more beneficial than looking at how sunny it is because we don't really gain anything by you know looking at how sunny it is. Um, there's kind of mathematical ways to formalize that, but that's sort of the gist of it. Um, so looking at our model, um, by the fact that we look at the number of links first, what that says is number of links is the most is the feature with the most information in it. That's how we look at that first. Um, to formalize that again, we can actually look at raw numbers for information gain of all of our features um, printed out here. Um, so we can see the number of links, um, and you don't pay attention to kind of what these numbers mean. Um, but we can say number of links has the most amount of information gain, um, followed by has HTML, followed by number of words. So in other words, number of links is our best feature. Um, to illustrate this a little further, uh, what we can actually do is we can make a dummy feature. We'll say uh, def dummy, and this is just going to return one. So regardless of what we're looking at, it's the wrong window, my apologies, uh, regardless of um, what kind of email, what's an email, we're going to return one. So once, if we load this into Weka, um, again, we see uh, we have our dummy feature. It's not very interesting. It's always one. And we go to do this again, we'll see that there's no information gain in looking at our dummy feature. That's because it's the same for everything. So basically, we look at the features um, which give us the most amount of knowledge gained when we look at them. Um, does that answer your question? Um, hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Um, are there any other questions? Um, cool. Any other questions before we go on? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. All right. Um, feel free to type them whenever if you ha get them. Um, cool. So now uh, we want some more features. Um, I asked you guys to kind of start to think of features um, while I was speaking. Um, did any of you have any ideas for things that we could use to tell spam apart from um, not spam? Um, you know, again, these are ways to transform the entire text of an email, which we can understand, but a computer can't, into a single numerical or binary feature. Um, you know, if something is present, the number of X's, the number of Y's, um, you know, et cetera. So did anybody come up with anything that they might be, they might think is helpful? Um, specific words, great. Um, perfect. So are there any words that you have in mind as being, you know, especially spammy? Um, free, okay. Um, let's pick, you guys can all kind of shout them out. Let's pick um, maybe five or six of these. Um, so we've got free. Um, any other words that kind of make, you know, scream spam to you? Um, I'll add, you know, buy to that list. Um, cool. Um, anything else? Um, we can actually, let's take a look at some of our spam emails. Maybe some words will jump out. Um, let's see. Yeah, on. Um, so maybe eligible. Um, you know, free is definitely a big one, though. Um, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna write these down. Um, join free by start. Um, let's get one or two more. Um, click here um, or click. Um, these are definitely words that, to me, you know, maybe not always, but de a discount, yep, um, definitely kind of screen spam. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a feature that um, returns the total number of all of these. Um, so I'll say def um, spammy words. So we're going to we're going to break this up on spaces, which will basically um, you know get out all of our words. Um, I'm going to say, going to make an array called spam words, um, put all these in, make them strings. Um, so now what we're going to do is, um, let's have to do this, oops, 
Cool. Um, so now for so let's say uh, total is zero. Um, excuse me if I kind of move to the Python quickly. I'm not really kind of focusing on the Python and programming behind this, so I'm just kind of kind of bang this stuff out. Um, so I'll say for word and spam words. Um, total plus equals um, split text dot count of words. So basically, for each of these words, we're appending the count of them to our total, and then we'll return total. Um, cool. Let's give this feature a shot. See how it works. Um, Run pretty quickly, which is great. I'll open it up. Um, cool. So now we've got our spammy words feature. Um, cool. So we've got between zero and thirty of these. Um, let's kind of zoom in to just take a look at this. Um, we can see a really great distribution here. Um, of our words that are red, which is not spam, um, you know, more of them than not contain zero. And as we look over here at the um, kind of spammer ones, this gets bluer and bluer, which means the more spam words, the higher likelihood it's spam, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, just kind of since we've been talking about information again, um, we can see that this does provide some amount, but not a whole lot. Um, as far as you know, running our classifier again, um, we can see our classifier actually dropped in accuracy. Um, not to say this is a bad feature. Um, this is actually a great feature. Um, so any ideas, um, and especially looking at this tree, um, why it might have dropped in accuracy? Um, any suggestions or ideas um, why that might be the case? Order of rules. Um, Potentially, um, that's not what I was looking for, um, but that very well might be. Um, the reason I think this dropped is going back to the problem of overfitting. Um, we have a lot, a lot of rules here. Um, you know, I guesstimate this is you know 40 or 50 rules, um, and you can see these are kind of really specific. Like we have this rule if it's greater than 94, 419. Um, you know, basically what this means is we might be looking way too specifically at the data that we have and not really, you know, ma making rules that are sort of too specific to our data. Um, this is where we can start to tweak model parameters. Uh, I'm not going to go into what all of these do, um, but we can sort of say, uh, I'm going to change some of these to um, give us a smaller tree. Uh, we can see it right here. This tree looks a bit smaller. Um, but our accuracy went down. Um, so maybe we can kind of tweak these a little more. Um, you know, maybe I'll make this point two. Um, you don't really have to worry about what these are. Um, but you can see these are uh, parameters that are affecting the size of our tree. Um, although we seem to be at kind of a stuck point at the 72.5 um, with these features, uh, 72, 6.2 rather, with these features. Um, that's because one of the kind of disadvantages to our tree form is that it really does have this tendency to kind of overlearn things, especially if we give it features that are not necessarily, um, you know, they're not necessarily that great. We saw again that our spammy words, you know, contributed a little bit, but it's not really the best. Um, so if we switch classifiers, we might actually get, um, you know, we might get better results. Um, I'm going to switch to this one. You don't really need to pay very much attention to what it does. Um, oh, that actually did not help us out. Um, so you can see that there's sort of a lot of experiment um, experimentation done between classifiers um, and kind of features. Um, what we're going to take a second to do, though, is go to another tab that we haven't seen, which is this Visualize tab. What this lets us do is look, um, you know, we, in kind of a non-numerical way, at how our features um, interact. Um, so let's take an example of um, number of words and number of links. Um, so I'll blow this up so hopefully you can see it. Um, so on one axis, so now we're plotting two features. Um, with same, still the same red and blue, but instead of plotting one, we're actually plotting this on two dimensions now. So each data point is, in the x-axis is um, its number of links, and in the y-axis it's the number of words. Um, and we can kind of see these trends now in more than one dimension. So we can look over here, you know, this whole big, big, big cluster seems to um, 
oops, um, you know, is all blue. So, you know, if we were trying to kind of hand draw lines here, we could draw a big line here and say anything to the right of this line, we're going to classify it blue, which I believe is our spam. Um, you know, in here, though, we've got this kind of big, big, big mix. Um, you know, there's spam, there's not spam, you know, there, there's everything. So, you know, we need to kind of look at it in another dimension or via another feature to kind of differentiate in there. Um, you know, luckily we have other features. So there's lots and lots and lots of these, um, you know, visualizations we can look at. Um, so I want to go back for a second, though, to our spammy words feature. Um, so to get this feature, um, what we did is we thought of words that, to us, indicate spam. Um, but, you know, we're biased. Um, you know, these are words that, you know, you came from kind of your, uh, you know, previous dealings with spam that might not be present in kind of our data set. You might be wrong. Um, or, you know, they might be present in spam, but uh, it might turn out that, um, you know, using the word free is just as uh, common in regular things. Um, it's just less prevalent. So what we want to look at is a way to use this, but um, let's automatically generate this list of words. Um, instead of having to, um, you know, think of it ourselves. That way we can actually see the distribution of words. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of um, copy-pasting for one second. Um, cool. Uh, let's say, um, all right, so what we're going to do here, um, and you can kind of ignore a lot of the Python, is we're going to have a dictionary of spam words, and not spam. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to fill those up, and we're going to look at every word used in every one of our emails, and you know then we're going to look at the distributions on that. Um, so quickly, what I'm going to do is um, um, we're going to say um, text equals open email uh, a i l uh, read, just get all the text of the email, dot split on a space. Um, so basically, let's get all of the text of our email, of that email. And then we're going to say for word in our text. Um, if the word is in, uh, let's see, we're doing this first on spam words, um, spam words at that word. We're going to increase the count by one. Basically, this is just getting the count. Um, of every word in our um, in our dictionary. So um, super simply, print spam words. Um, so I'll save this as word counts dot pi. Um, so that was super fast. I apologize, but we're kind of very limited. Um, unexpected indent. Oops. Um, Now this all got unindented. Um, we need to import some things. Cool. Um, so this is a whole big, big, big mess. But it's this huge dictionary of all of our words and how often we sell them. So this is a mess. It's got links. It's got um, you know HTML in here. We're going to ignore that. Um, what we're going to do is basically just print out. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort this and just print out the words that we see um, most. So um, we're going to say keys equals um, spam words dot keys. Um, we'll sort this. Um, so to sort this, we need um, we need the what to sort by. So we're going to sort by um, the number of keys, and we're going to do this in reverse order. Um, reverse order, so we get the most ones first. Um, and we're going to print keys uh, through 50. Um, we'll, we'll print 10 of them. Um, this is, oops. Um, what did I do? Um, I'll take this away. Um, this should give us the 10, you know, kind of ignoring the huge mess. Um, 
Uh, all right. Um, key equals. Um, right. Uh, spam words. Sorry about that. Um, so giving this, barring this huge mess, um, this gives us the ten most seen words. Um, just to show this a little bit more concretely, for word in keys, um, print word, and uh, we'll print the spam words, uh, the count of that word. Um, so to print all of these out, you can see a ton of them. Um, the, of, and, you are our most seen words. Um, at first, this seems like it's kind of bad. Um, you know, we th these don't seem to help us. We can't look for the word A um, because it's going to be all over in both of them. Um, that's fine. Um, I'll go back to reversing this now that I fixed it. Um, reverse equals true. Um, and I will print only the first. Um, so what we can do is um, okay, this is not. Um, sure, we'll print this all out right now. Um, what we can do is we can kind of hand look and see the words that are in one a lot, but not in the other. Um, so we're going to do this whole thing again. Um, but we're going to do it for the not spam. Um, so let's keep in mind some of these words that we think are too present in our spam. Um, so ones that I see that are kind of abnormal here um, are Helvetica, interestingly enough. So now let's write these down in our feature. Uh, and now instead of the ones we saw, we'll use um, these. So, um, so, so actually, I, I apologize. Um, one thing I meant to do first. Um, is what's called normalization. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make everything lowercase. Um, that way we um, don't have to worry about you know saying something in uppercase and in lowercase, um, you know counting as two different times. Um, so again, let's quickly look at our spam words. Um, should be roughly the same. So these don't really matter. Um, we've got Helvetica. Um, so let's take five or six of these. Um, so we'll say Helvetica is a big one. Um, new, which is one we definitely didn't think of. Um, you know, money. Uh, what's another big one? Email. Um, receive. And let's do business. Um, and now let's do this again for our not spam. So now instead of spammy words, we also actually have this list of not spammy words. Um, which might actually be just as um, helpful. Um, so let's see. These are sort of all very common words. Um, but we have email. Um, interestingly, it's spelled differently. Um, that may or may not be kind of a key here. Um, people is a big word. Um, time. Let's see what's another one. Um, Please. All right, cool. So let's take a look at how this works. I don't want to spend too much time with this. Um, you'll see why in a second. Um, so let's run our feature extract again um, and see how these new distributions look. Cool. Um, so our spammy words distribution looks roughly similar, as does our not spammy. Um, again, though, it's good. We've got reds here, um, and then we've got a lot of blues out here. And we actually go to visualize the information again. Um, we see that they're both kind of, again, all right, um, but you know they do provide some information in here. Um, and as we classify, we can see that this actually did help. Um, we're up to now close to 79% accuracy, which is really great. Um, you know we, you know we kind of now we have a very significant improvement over our baseline. Um, you know we went from I think it was 63% to 79, uh, which is definitely helpful. Um, we're going to continue with this. Um, there's actually a lot, a lot, a lot of really interesting things we can look at um, with, you know, looking at the actual words we see um, in our thing. You know, we can train for words um, or even combinations of words. So instead of looking at which one word we see a lot, we can look at what are called bigrams and trigrams, which are pairs of words and three groups of words that we see a lot. So, you know, maybe... Um, Free is found a lot in both regular spam email 
and non-spam email. But free money is only found in spam email. We can actually, you know, encode that relationship that free money is spammy, but just free or just money is not. Um, so there's a lot of kind of more advanced things we can do with features like that um, that let us um, kind of, uh, you know, get way more into the, um, you know, the actual structure in our text. Um, so we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, if there are any other features that you guys suggest, um, now would be a great time to let me know. We can go ahead and implement those and kind of talk about them. Um, otherwise, I can kind of give one or two more features as well as um, kind of show you a little bit more about the power of Weka and some other classifiers that we have. Um, so any of you guys have any questions or um, are open to ask me any kind of generic questions about um, the field or this problem we're solving or anything I did, um, or if you have any features to suggest. And I will uh, stop screen sharing so you can see me for a bit. Um, Cool. Any questions? Um, I'm sure at least one of you has some kind of question um, about something we did. We went through a lot, a lot, a lot of material in 50 minutes. Um, we kind of hit a number of different fields even. Um, you know, we touched batch language processing. We did an intro to machine learning. Um, we looked at some new software. Um, so I'm sure you have some questions. So um, now would be a great time to ask any of those you have for me or suggest another feature for us to implement. And I will give you guys a second to type while I uh, catch my voice a little bit. Do um, nobody have any questions? Um, all right, I guess I will continue to talk um, a little bit about. Oh, sure. Um, no email addresses. Um, so that's. Um, a very good feature suggestion. Um, unfortunately, can't implement it right now, but it brings up a great talking point. Um, and the talking point is, what data do we need? Um, so we came into this problem, and I was nice enough to already prepare a data set for this. Um, but when you're approaching a problem in general, you often don't have data yet, um, and you don't know what data you need. So um, you know, if I told you to um, you know, if I told you just, hey, um, you've got an hour or a day, go write me a system that finds that you know, finds spam and email. Um, you know, certainly a data set that we got is kind of data set you're going to want. Um, you very likely want more of it. Um, but in addition, you might want to find out another data set. Um, you don't want to get this email, this database email addresses and cross-reference those. That would be an, a great feature. Um, more specifically, though, um, so email addresses is kind of a bit shaky because you know spam email accounts get shut down, spammers change email addresses. One thing you could learn very easily is for each domain, maybe the probability that um, you know spam is coming from that is um, you know either high or low. So for example, not many people use Gmail for spam um, just because Google's really really great at detecting that and shutting those email accounts down. Um, you know if you probably if you start spamming out a Gmail account within a couple hours or days, they're probably going to shut it down. Um, but, you know, these some crazy domains that people own themselves or, you know, Hotmail is really popular. Um, you might find a pattern there that, you know, hey, people who use Hotmail, that's much more likely to be spam than someone using, you know, Gmail or Outlook. Um, so maybe not email address itself, but there's definitely things we can learn by looking at, um, you know, what, email, what comes from that. Um, in addition, that kind of brings us to a whole new class of speakers which are the meta information features. Um, so the, um, everything, all the features we looked at were features actually in the email. They were the text of what people said, um, you know, if they use HTML, but they were kind of things contained in the message itself that we were looking at. There's this whole other class of features we can look at um, that deal with the meta information. Um, so maybe we can look at what time the email was sent. Um, maybe we find that, hey, you know, spammers, um, um, spammers email, you know, at 3 in the morning where normal people, you know, email more during business hours. So if something is sent between 9 and 5, we probably uh, say, hey, you know, better chance of not being spammed versus if it's sent between, you know, 2 and 4 in the, mo four in the morning, um, it is likely to be spam. So there's lots and lots of other features. Um, the data set we have doesn't actually give us that meta information. But again, as we get more and more data, we can kind of incorporate more and more features. So that's a really great suggestion. 
Um, any other feature suggestions or, um, or this question for me? Um, if you have anything else. Um, um, okay, um, so what we'll do now is we will jump back into Weka. Um, and I think we will, let's see, let, let's implement um, one more feature, um, I think. Let me just take a quick peek. I had a couple extra features um, that I wanted to implement. Uh, let me just take a quick peek at what they are. Um, and then I will reshare my screen. Um, to do apologies. Um, cool. Um, right. Um, so let me share my screen again. Um, so the last feature I wanted to implement, um, this one's again not too revolutionary. It just sort of um, illustrates some of the concepts we've shown before. Um, let us look at um, the number of capital letters. Um, one thing that I noticed, again, when I was looking through this data set, is um, spammers tend to shout. You know, they get really up in your face. Buy this now um, versus when I'm writing an email to a friend or a colleague or someone, I'm very likely not going to um, type in all caps. Um, so we can actually do two features out of this. We can say um, def all caps email text. Um, we can say, you know, return one if email text equals email text dot upper. So basically say if it's all uppercase. And then we can also say def um, cap ratio, which is probably a much better feature because most emails aren't all upper. Uh, we get the ratio of capital letters to um, lowercase letters. Um, so to do this, we'll say um, lowers equals, um, let's say, f for f email text if f dot f equals um, so we'll get the length of this list, and then we'll say just the same. Upper is, is um, upper, as the number of uppercase letters. Um, and again, this is sort of a little bit of a simplification because spaces and um, non uh, non ASCII characters can kind of throw this off a little bit. Uh, but we're going to return the ratio of uppers to lowers um, and, and see how this looks. Um, this is taking a little bit longer. Cool. Uh, I will reload this. Um, let me go. I lost it. Uh, desktop spam. Um, cool. So we can see all caps um, as expected. There is only, it looks like three emails that are all caps. Most of them are not. Um, so if we go look at our information gain, that's going to be very low. We can see, yeah, if it's all caps, you know, that might help, but we have very, very, very limited information, so we can't really make that decision. That being said, oh, man, our capital letter ratio is fantastic. That tells us a whole lot. Um, and you can see this is a really, really, really fantastic distribution. Um, you know, our mean looks to be about here. Um, anywhere to the right of here, you know, using more than average capital letters is probably is almost definitely spam. And anything using less is almost definitely not. So I'm going to say we're at 78%. Um, look at that. Just using that, we jumped to um, almost 86%. Um, so that shows us, and kind of our select attributes, you know, um, verify that that our infer that um, capital letter ratio is a really, really, really great feature. Uh, the one last thing I want to end on is. Um, as we get lots of features, our models will get very, very, very slow to train, um, just because it takes a very long time to kind of learn these patterns. You know, right now we've got, I think, seven features. That's not so bad. Um, so Weka has this really great feature built in where it says, um, you know, hey, look, here are you know, the best features. Try selecting them. Um, so if we look at only capital ratio HTML and spammy words, um, so let's look capital ratio HTML spammy words. Um, and we remove the rest. Um, if we look, do do do. Um, Moek appears to have frozen. Uh, we will probably get a somewhat similar um, accuracy, even though we're only using a subset of the features. Uh, my Weka appears to have frozen. Um, 
So I guess we're not going to figure out what the accuracy is. Um, but that's basically a, um, a way to kind of simplify it and say, you know, what features are helping a lot and what features don't we really need. Um, so that's all really all the time we have. Um, if you have any questions for me, um, I'm around for a little bit to answer them. Um, but I really appreciate you guys coming um, and listening. Hopefully uh, it was informative and you learned a lot. Um, you Good questions and answers. Um, what I'm doing right this very second is adding everything we just did to GitHub. Um, post lesson. Um, Cool, so that is now uh, in about three seconds on GitHub. I encourage all of you to um, go and um, to, um, to go and implement your own features and try and see how that um, improves the results um, or makes the results worse. Um, I encourage you to play around with different classifiers in Weka. Uh, Weka is freely available for download. I linked in the GitHub page where you can get it. Um, other than that, I really appreciate everyone coming. I hope it was um, informative, and um, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them now um, or to shoot me a message. Um, so any questions before we wrap up? Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of time to type before I end this. Um, so the, I will link it again. For, um, I can't see if anybody joined or not. Um, but I will link the GitHub um, in the chat here. Uh, let me find where I did with the window. Cool. Um, cool. So there's that. Um, all of the, everything we just did there, um, it shouldn't have any dependencies that I didn't mention um, in the readme. Everything I use today is freely available software. Um, so I really encourage you to um, get your hands dirty, um, give it a shot, and um, all the best. Thank you, guys.